Okay, hola year nine, it's Mrs Hillier. So we're continuing with our present tense and food topic. Last week we learnt how to form the present tense and um, this week we're going to be continuing learning how to use it more efficiently, more confidently, in particular to say what other people eat in the present tense. And we're going to be using a skill of translation, which is an important skill in the GCSE. So all of the tasks that we do today that you need to submit can be completed on the Word document that you'll find below the video and the PowerPoint slide section. Um, so you can download that and fill, fill all of our tasks in on there today and then submit that sheet. For some of you I know have been working on your books and taking pictures, that is more than fine as well, you can do that. But there is a reading task later on, I will, I'll explain how you can, you can do that for your book, okay? So if you're working on your book, put today's date, which is lunes el 29 de junio, but of course you might be now doing this in julio, later on in the week, uh, and our title is el presente, okay? Let's just a quick do a quick recap. What are the three steps to making a verb in the present tense? In other words, I want to take a verb, any doing word, and I want to turn it into I jump, we jump, they jump. What are the three steps? So pause the video now and see if you can recall what those three steps are off the top of your head. It might be that you know part of it and you need to check your book. Maybe you can already recall all three steps. So you've had a chance to pause and have a think. So step one, it's find the infinitive of the verb. In other words, the verb that ends in er, ar or ir. Take off that last two letter ending and add the correct ending from the table that we know um, to say who's doing the verb. So in a bit more detail, just to recap, you get your verb, it will end in something like er, ar or ir and that bit is the bit that means to. So I'll take that bit off and it leaves me with a stem. So estudiar, to study. I need to get rid of the to part because I don't want to say I to study. So I get rid of the AR. It leaves me with estudi. And then I need to add the right ending for the person. And because I've taken off AR, it's this column that I will need to get my ending from. And if I want to say I study, it's going to be estudio. You study, estudias. He st studies. Estudia, we study estudiamos, you plural a group of people estudiais, they study estudian. And if it had been an ER verb, we would have taken that off and added these endings and an IR verb. So to just get our minds back into doing that, we're going to do a little um, practice. So if you have a whiteboard at home, then you can use it for, for, for this, or otherwise just get a scrap piece of paper or just type out the answers. It doesn't really matter where, you don't need to submit these to me, just a little bit of practice for you. So I'll call it a verb in Spanish and it'll be on the screen as well and the person, um, in case you forget when you're pausing what I said, and you need to put it into Spanish, just like we did last lesson. So if I say escribir, which means to write, and what is I write, on your whiteboard or scrap paper, whatever you're writing on, pause the video and write down what I would write I write is so I take off my last two letters you might need to check back at the grid but hopefully well, by now we remember that I verbs always end in O so it would be escribo okay so pause the video now if you haven't got something to write down or type or whatever wherever it is you're writing okay so you should have what you need now and let's go so cantar means to sing Pause the video and write down they sing. So we should have cantan. Escuchar is to listen. So pause the video and write down we listen. So hopefully you took off the AR and added amos, not emos, because it's an AR verb. So escuchamos, we listen. Dibujar, if you're talking to one person and you're being informal, you know them, I want you to write you draw. So we should have dibujas. So moving on now from AR verbs to an IR verb, there are AR verbs are more common than any other. Okay, there's a lot more AR verbs, so those are the endings you need to know best. But so vivir is to live. How would you say I live? Pause and write it down. So vivo is what we should have. And then correr, to run. How would I say he runs? 
So I hope you've unpaused now and you have written corre. Salir, the final one means to go out. And if you're talking to a group of people that you know, then how would you say you go out? So pause and write it down. And hope you've written salis. Remember the accent. Okay. All accents go one way in Spanish, a little easier than French in that respect. They all go forward, what we call an a acute accent. Okay, if you're typing, uh, you can hold down, there's a button, or it should be on most keyboards, a button that says ALTGR next to your space bar. So if you hold down that, ALTGR, then press the letter that you want the accent on. So if I wanted to put that I in, I would hold down Alt G R and press the I and you get the I with the accent. Okay. Right, so hopefully we are feeling a bit more confident with form and our present tense verbs because we've had the little recap. We are going to do a little more later on, so that'll build that confidence. But we're going to look now about seeing what other people eat in the present tense. And that kind of goes hand in hand with learning how to form the present tense. So you've got a reading text here, which is your first task, first task, sorry, on the Word document. So what you need to do, task one, is to highlight or underline, uh, whatever you prefer, all of the verbs in this reading, then write them into different lists. So I've created the list headings on the Word document for you. Um, so they can see that they're the same uh, headings here. OK, so if you're working in your books, what you can do is just simply write the, write the headings out. Um, and then later on we're back in class, you can print the text to go with it. Or if you've got a computer at home, you can print it. If you're feeling super studious today, you could write the whole text out if you wanted to, but I'm not expecting that, okay? Um, so what you need to do, like I said then, is to highlight all of the verbs in the text and then write them in the columns. So you don't need to color code your verbs, you just need to highlight them. One color is fine. By putting them into columns, you will show that you know which type they are. So I've given you some examples to remind you of what they should look like. Okay, what an infinitive verb is, the verb that ends in ear, ear or I on, so on. I verbs, he, she verbs, we verbs, and they verbs. Now, just a reminder, the verb s, which means is, and son, are, come from the verb ser, to be. You've probably forgotten that we did that quite a few months ago. And those are irregular, because ser, to be, is an er verb. So really, it should it should be say say it, he is, um, but it isn't. Okay, so those are irregular. So you can circle them and add them to your he she column because he she and it all take the same endings. He is, it is, um, they take the same endings. Okay, um, so you can add them to the he she verbs column, but they're not. You know, it's not the same uh, skill if you're not you're not recognizing the ending because they don't have the same endings. Okay. So pause the video and take however long you need to find all the verbs and then put them into the right columns on the worksheet. OK, so highlight them on your worksheet. Um, if you're working online, um, as in doing the work, the, you haven't printed the sheet and you're completing the sheet on the computer, that's fine. I expect most of you will do that. Then you, you, know, you can highlight it with the, the text highlighter on Word. OK. Right, so you've either written those lists out into your books or you've typed them onto the word document or you've written them onto the word document if you printed it um so we'll go through them now so we should have me yamo as an i verb literally i call myself okay that's it's how they say my name is i call myself it's a, what we call a reflexive verb we'll learn about later comer is the only infinitive actually in the whole text i love to eat i've got to have even though it's saying i love eating i can't have me encanta como here because that would say I love I eat. So I've got to have the verb in the infinitive there. I love to eat. Then we've got es, is, es, and again. Odia is a he, she verb. Now I've color coded mine, you didn't have to, but just so you know which column they should be in. So this is uh, he hates, my brother, mi hermano hates. Um, then piensa, my brother thinks. So it's a he ending. And es something and I'm gonna tell you what things are um because that's gonna be coming in your next task. Something is asqueroso you might remember means disgusting from two lessons ago with this. Okay. Uh me posri favorito son are because I'm talking about some plural here are churros and then are again 
but here it means they are. So remember, they don't bother with the they, I, he, she, because the verb ending tells you. So son means are or they are. Then we have common, they eat, so we're talking about his friends. Como is an I verb, I eat, ends in an O. Come, he or she, in this case it's my brother eats. We've got a we verb now because it ends in mos, yo y mi hermano, I, myself, I and my brother, bebemos, we drink. Como, down here, an I verb, I eat. Son, they are or are, so it's a they verb. Come is a he or she, in this case it's with a, a boy, mi amigo, mi amigo Carlos, my brother, my friend Carlos. Eats. Are again. Then we have como again, so an I, another I verb. Comen, a they verb, they eat. Son, are. Comemos, we eat and son ah. Now you might have highlighted a couple of others in the text. So down here we have me gustan and at the top we have twice me encanta. Now encanta here has got the a ending so it's a he she verb and this here me gusta has got the n here to make it me gustan so it's a they verb but obviously it's talking about we know these as our opinions I love and I like so we would think that they are I verbs but opinions in Spanish are a funny uh, sort of set up. Okay, so you might not remember this after today. We'll come back to it later on, but just just to touch on it today. The way it works is it literally is you take the he she form if it's something singular or the they form if it's something plural and it's saying he or she like pleases me or like really pleases me. So it's the me here so that makes it I. So I love is eating like really really pleases me it's like it goes backwards and here carrots then a horias they please me it goes backwards okay so when you're talking about opinions apart from hate i love and i and i love like work in a different way to the others but you at the moment you just know them as set phrases me gusta i like me encanta i love and you add an m if it's plural okay Right, so that was task one. For task two, we're using the same text, and what I want you to do is to answer the questions in English, okay? So either write the answers out in your book, you don't need to write out the questions as well, or if you've printed the sheet, you can write them on, or if you're typing onto the sheet, type your answers on, okay? So pause the video, um, and if you've got the sheet in front of you, that's easy enough to keep going to you don't need to keep going back and forth but if you're working in your book it's probably a good idea that you pause the video on the questions and go to the slide and the slide show underneath where the reading is so you can look at both then okay and I'll mark these so you can see how you did when I take in your work so pause and take as long as you need okay okay the next activity we're going to do is a translation. Now, what I want you to do for this is please, please, please don't use Google Translate for the whole thing or even for whole sentences or more than two words together, really. OK, um, because you're not going to learn anything that way because Google has done the work for you. And translating is a really important skill. It's the very last question in your reading exam, translating Spanish into English. So it's obviously important that you're practicing how you translate, because sometimes we wouldn't translate something completely literally. It might not sound the best in our native language. So it's working out what's the best translation for English, because it's your native language. But also it's a really important skill in general with um, languages because we're constantly translating really when we're thinking about what we want to say from one language into the other. Um, so take your time over this, read the text carefully, look back over the last few lessons. There are a couple of new words in there like alrededor and that's fine to put those into Google Translate or even better wordreference.com is a brilliant online dictionary because it gives you examples with the sentences, tells you what they are if they're in a certain form. You can conjugate verbs on theirs and put them into all the different forms. It's a brilliant dictionary, okay? 
Um, I've just highlighted a couple of things there to help you. So the C before these he, she verb endings here or it endings. So desayuna and cena. Go back to your first lesson with miss. Are verbs for certain meals in Spanish. And when we put the C before any verb in the he, she form, it's kind of like saying um, one does this. So if I said se bebe in España, se bebe, I'm saying like one drinks. Um, so if I said se bebe sangria in España, I'm saying one drinks sangria in, in Spain. We don't tend to say one in normal everyday English. So it's it's just like saying in Spain they drink sangria in Spain. You could also say you drink, okay? Because it's talking about Spanish people in general, okay? Um, and then these ones I've highlighted in blue are times of the day. So we have a learnt time. Oh, there's another one there as well, las nueve. Um, so look at those numbers. Work out what you think media might mean. Um, and if you need to, look it up, okay? Now, in an exam, obviously, you don't have a dictionary. So you would have a lot more vocabulary by the exam compared to what you've got now. So you might only know, might there might be one or two words you don't know and you can work them out from context. Whereas at the moment, there's probably a few words you either have forgotten from the last few lessons or don't know. So please don't panic. Try not to leave any blanks. See if you can work out. If you haven't, haven't been able to work out a word, see if you can work out what would make logical sense in English. And what I'd like you to do as well is please don't look up the word until you've tried to work it out in English. Just say, for example, you were able to translate all of this sentence as far, apart from bastante, up as far as here. What word in English would make most logical sense? See if you can work it out first. OK, so pause the video, take your time over this and then come back and check your answers. OK. OK, so the correct translation is this. Um, so what I want you to do is mark yours in a different colour as usual. Don't change it so I can see what you were able to um, complete here. OK, so you've either written it in your book or typed it or written it on the sheet. And either way is fine. OK, so no, normally in Spain, they eat or you eat or one eats. It's that sort of thing. Breakfast. OK, so because desayuna is the verb to eat breakfast. So they eat breakfast quite late. So you might have been able to work normally in Spain, they eat breakfast and then late and been had to guess what bastante means. Well, you know moy is very, maybe you remember that one. Um, so you, you can maybe make a logical guess and an exam of what could fit there. And then alrededor de means around and we've got ten and half, literally, so half past ten. Se consiste en, it consists of, that might have been a tricky part to translate. Um, but you might have been able to work out the means they have. You might put something along those lines. A sandwich or toast or churros. Lunch is generally the main meal of the day. Between, so you might not have been able to work out del on your own. You might have looked that one up. One and a half, so half past one and four. The Spanish, or you can just say Spanish people, have... So toman means take, but when we use it with food, a better translation would be to say hey, have. You could say they take a snack, but eat or have is a better translation. That's what I was talking about earlier. It doesn't have to be literal. It's what makes them best English when you're translating into your na native tongue. Okay. Spanish have a snack. Lost my mouse them later, more late, um, which consists of, there's that phrase again, a cake or sandwich. Finally, they eat dinner. So cena means to eat dinner. So they eat dinner, one eats dinner, uh, very late, around nine. It is more light or lighter than lunch, perhaps, or maybe tapas. Okay. Right, the final activity we're going to come on to in a moment. But just to help you with that, I just want to recap some adjectives for describing foods. So that, because you're going to be doing some writing about food in a moment. So what I want you to do is to make two columns. Now, you could do this back where you made your notes before with Miss um, on uh, adjectives, but they're what we've done before. So you don't need to submit this to me again. Um, or you can just put it into your book or anyway, it could be on a post-it and then you're going to look at this post-it over the next week to help you learn them. 
I don't mind, but you don't need to submit this task to me unless you want to add it to your Word document, that's fine, okay? Um, so, pause the video, put all of these adjectives into whether they describe foods positively or negatively, and translate each one, okay? Right, so we should have now translated and categorised those words into good and bad. So we've got delicious, delicioso. What I'd like you to do is, as I say these words, pause and repeat the Spanish. Okay, so we've got a little bit of speaking practice then. Delicioso, really good, buenísimo. Something is rich, or in other words, you could also say that for delicious. Riquísimo, riquísimo. And sweet is dulce. Then the negatives. Salty is salado. I suppose that could be a good thing, depending on what you're describing. Horrible. Horrible. Picante. Again, you might think that's a good thing. Um, so that could have gone in either. That's okay. Amargo for bitter. And asqueroso. So I'll bring that one up. Asqueroso. Asqueroso. Okay, so just a little recap for you. Like I said, you don't have to submit that to me because you've done that done work on that before. So as long as you just had that little practice of reminding yourself what they are. Um, so task four then, being able to write about what other people eat. So you're going to write a small paragraph or a letter similar to uh, Ricardo's to say what you usually eat or drink, okay? Uh, also, what a family friend or family or family member, sorry, or friend usually eats, and um, what you and the rest of your family eat, so using the we. Try and use as many different people as possible, okay, so you're practicing the different endings. So obviously using I verbs for end an O. Pick someone that you can use for a he or she. You get some we verbs in there, and think of a group of people you can use for they. So it could be my parents, or my siblings, or my friends, um, so you're talking about they. Okay, so it might start off something like Normalmente para el desayuno como los cereales, sin embargo, mi hermano Josh come, come los tostadas. Prefiero los cereales porque son deliciosos. So that's 21 words there so far. Okay, and that's just two sentences. So it's very easy for you to get up to between 50 to 100 here. Okay, you'd be surprised how quickly you can get that far. So this means here, normally for breakfast, I eat cereal. However, so I've made a comparison, my brother Josh eats toast. I prefer cereal because, now I know in English, it's a single noun for us, but in Spanish it's plural, so I have to say they are delicious. And then my delicious needs to end in an S, extra S, and it doesn't need to be deliciosas, because it's not feminine, it's los cereales, not las. Okay, so as you write, please check your endings of when you describe what they're like, salty, um, bitter, whatever it is. Make sure you've got the right ending, if it's something feminine, if it's something plural. And make sure you've got lots of adjectives in there for descriptions. See if you can remember some sentence starters. Now, obviously, we haven't got our lovely literacy wall phrases right next to where you're working with things like I think that, on the one hand, I believe that. But you can look those up. To help you okay um or you might remember some off the top of your head um so i think that uh, churros are delicious however i don't eat them often or maybe you say my family we don't eat them often use time phrases that makes them better often sometimes never those are other great ways to add extra detail okay um so that's the fourth task you need to submit to me to so either write it in your work and add it to the photos you're uploading or write it on the worksheet or type it onto the worksheet okay so that's everything that covers today we've been able to form the present tense more confidently if you were able to do that um, whiteboard task quite confidently just using your notes and you were getting them right and if you feel in that last task then the writing that you are changing the endings correctly for each person then you're able to do that and that means you're also able then to say what other people eat in the present tense. Did you make sure you had como, comes, well I suppose you wouldn't say you eat in that text but como, come, comemos, comen in the same for beber, different endings for whoever's doing the eating.